of God be with you all in the name of Jesus. We thank God so much. We really thank him for how far he has brought us. The hot subject I tried to dodge since I started this program. When I was doing in the local language, I, I didn't do that. When I got there, I stopped until I resumed in English. Also, when I got there, I gave like two, three subjects and I stopped. The reason is that, like I told you in my, when I resume, I told you that in my lifestyle, I'm a happy person. I, I don't like causing trouble to some people, discomfort. If you play with me, you tell me you don't like this, I will never do that again. So, things that I know some people don't want, I don't go there. So, I know I knew this subject will cause some people, will hurt some people. In God's uh, perspective, it is an advice, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a profit, benefit. If you are not in good position and somebody is pointing, it's good for you. But, Christian have problem. The name Christian itself, it a bit a very big problem. One prophet in Ghana said, Christian has a long way to go as as far as uh, heaven is concerned. The story control Christian are many. We gave you last uh, video. An attempt to help ourselves, we see it as judging or condemning. So, it's always unfortunate to take subject that you know it will go against some people. 
In the New Testament, Colossians and Ephesians, Apostle Paul intentionally requested for prayer support before he could be able to deliver those messages. But the reason why I'm thanking God is that I've been able to make it through all the lesser subject given to me. Some people have been lost and some people have been added, <laughs> depending on the subject. Hey, we have lots of people because of the subject. Somebody who follow has uh, followed us from the beginning over, over three years ago. Now the last two subject has hated him severely. The wearing of jewelries and the anointing oil. He strongly believed anointing oil and he, he believed that if a woman put earring, you go to hell. That is the holiness church. Even if you have wedding ring, you go to hell. This is a subject that hates him so much. And so many of them. And those subjects have also, have also brought other people who are also interested in them. So Christians are very, very funny. Christians are very, very funny. And if I had a choice, I wouldn't have gone there. And if I didn't do it, everything I've been doing here would be in vain. Somebody has found himself in the wrong place without his knowledge. And you'll be preaching him or teaching him to do the right thing in the wrong place. It will not work. So I needed to bring those subjects uh, as a compulsory, a mandatory. And thank God I've been able to make it. And like I said, we lose some people and we gain some people. Some people have still, still remain. One friend in the South America, every day clapping, that means he has been following. Though, so, either any of these subjects is hitting him or, her or not, he has become, he has proof as a mature believer. If a subject go against you, if you are a mature believer, you have a correct brain. There is no cause for alarm. You don't have any right to get angry, but because you have your freedom. You know it happened to Jesus and Paul. So you should have even remind yourself, ah, some people get angry when Jesus Christ was stating something. When Christ came, there was a religion, a church. His forefathers, all of the Israelites, that is their church. He came to condemn that, to give them another one, the proper one. So they realized, no, we can't accept this message. Apostle Paul talked from morning to evening, as of the Apostle chapter 20, they still refused. And sometimes they pick up stone and stone him. Why? He was doing evil things. So I was not comfortable to cause somebody or no, to hurt somebody in any way, but like I said, it calls for wisdom. Christians need wisdom. So the point number six or five, I skip number five to number six, and it born again believers who lack knowledge. We are trying to bring something to your attention. I think they reduce now, but sometimes they go into too much. Every day somebody has seen something. Christian did not go to heaven every day, every day. Maybe it is still going on, but I stopped those who used to send it to me that I don't need those messages before. I know that Christian are not going to hell. I already know the scripture proof. So, in this point, some subject will come across that will not hurt any church, will not hurt anybody. At this point, we are going to help believers who are who have found themselves in the church that Holy Spirit is the spirit over there. We have let you know that all those churches, the reason why struggling, disagreement, argument is that every spirit is looking for more people. And the Holy Spirit is very gentle and calm, seeking 
the elect, the chosen one, the covenanted one, and seekers who are ready to go with him. But others, everybody is trying to get more. That is why the war is outside. So the rejected ministry of pastors re revealed in this point. And the difference between disciples and Christians. The difference between Christians and then the disciples. The difference is that Christians enjoy salvation on this earth, but disciples enjoy the teachings which lead to the kingdom of God. So if you are a Christian and you had a, you had a vision or dream or revelation, you, or you have heard somebody talking about Christians did not go to heaven, Christians did not go to heaven, the main reason is that they did not choose to become disciples. Jesus knew disciples. He raised disciples. He established discipleship. And later on, the name Christian came in. And it had become a broad organization that discipleship is still inside Christianity. So, in this point, we want you to know the main, one of the main cause of those known as Christian is able to miss heaven. It's the lack of knowledge. You have heard it before, right? Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. We, al we always end it there, but it has a continuation. Let me check it for you. My people perish from the lack of knowledge. Nimdia, ni manfu nintina oiraira. My people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I I also will ignore your children. The more priests there were the more they sin against me. That is verse 7. They exchange their glorious God for something disgraceful. They feed on, on the sin of my people. They relish their wickedness. And it will be like, like verse 9. And it will be like people, like priests. I will punish both of them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. But we always make it very short. My people perish. My, my people destroy. Lack of knowledge. He continued that they, 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 they ignore. They reject knowledge. Knowledge is not granted like wisdom. God don't grant knowledge. He grant wisdom. But knowledge is acquired. You cannot uh, wake up one day and begin to uh, drive a car. No. You need somebody to teach you how to drive it. If you want trailer, big ones, there should be some kind of knowledge that's supposed to be provided to you. So also in Christianity, in the worshiping of God through Christ Jesus, there should be some knowledge provided. So when you read so this passage is telling us that the more priests they were, the more sin they, they were, the more they sin against God. Sometimes ago, few churches, you did not hear what we used to hear now. But now, a lot of churches, every corner there is a church, every corner there is a church. If not that, the government has stopped school. Every school you see, church, 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 Everywhere, people dying, killing, ritual is going on. Why? Knowledge. If people that are worshiping God have knowledge, they will know the man of God and the one who pretend or who claim to be the man of God. The reason why all these ministers or every tokrum, whatever anybody is, is starting here, he gets some people is that People that desire to worship God lack knowledge. They don't have it. So
So they know anybody that pick up Bible quoting from the scriptures is the man of God. As long as the message comes from this Bible, that is the word of God. Well, I'm about to read to you, listen attentively. John chapter 8, 30 to 32. John 8, 30 to 32. It is because of the time that actually, if you want to know this, read from verse 21 to 59. You get a point. I'm going to say something to you here. Even as he spoke many, even as he spoke, even as he spoke, many believed in him. Many believed in him. To the Jews who had believed in, Je in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The word of God is there. Even the devil knows the word of God. Demon could the word of God. We have the teaching taught by demon, thing taught by demon. So demons also teach, but they don't teach the truth. Anybody who have the truth of the word of God, it will lead you to the kingdom of God. So when you read Matthew chapter 19, verse, sorry, Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, he said, anyone who hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the devil come, snatch it away from your heart so that you will not believe and be saved. So the devil, even if he have the truth, he will never, the devil will never provide 100% truth to any minister. So all those working with the demon, they have about 80% truth, some of them, some of them 40, some of them 50, some of them even have up to 90. Like the subject I walk you through. Somebody is affected only one. Somebody is affected too, like my friend a prophet, too, affected him. <laughs> too affected him. He was enjoying since 2018. He has enjoyed the message. He downloaded them. He said it to me. He downloaded every of my message. Too affected him. Somebody is affected one. When you go to my Facebook page, all my friends over there, pastors and bishops, whoever they are, prophet. Some of, them, some of them affected one, some of them five, some of them so. Whoever is affected, he go back. He said, go away. So they want me to be in line with their hand, they will clap. But I'm not here to please people. I'm here to do what I have been sent to do. So I tried to dodge it, but it didn't work. So once I took it, uh, I resumed it. I had to. Close my eyes and deliver the message. Thank God it has been delivered. So when Jesus Christ came, he spoke so many things that contradicted to what they have known. It was different from how they have been taught. So they were very much angry. They were very much angry. And at times they used to go out from him, desert him. Here, he was stating some point, he was giving them, them some teachings. As you know, look uh, 13, 22 to 24, he was walking through towns and villages and teachings. So Jesus Christ came to establish Christianity on teachings. So, as I, as I told you, as you'll be going deeper, he will let you know. You yourself will know. Because yesterday I was talking to uh, an old time friend that we have lost contact. And when we were talking, he said, now people even don't want to go to church again. And somebody have, some people have also resolved to stay where they are, even though they know things are not right. But because who is telling the truth? Who is telling the truth? All of them, everyone also claim that God, the same God has called him. So God called this one and tell him it is black. God called this one and tell him it is blue. God called this one and tell him it is green. God called this one and tell him it is red. God called this one and tell him it is yellow. That God who have been the best deceiver in the world, more dangerous than the devil. This God, if our God, 
is doing this, then he could be more dangerous even than the devil. How can your God do this to you? Beloved, open your eyes, okay? So Jesus said, those who have come, you are well done. You have been saved. I give salvation. So you have been saved. But I'm going to walk you, walk you through some kind of teachings. If you are able to hold it, then you will qualify to become my disciples. Through that, you know what is called the truth. And that truth will walk you to the kingdom of God. Beloved, if you continue the conversation, this is a conversation that ended at the point that they were trying to stone him in verse 59. At this, they pick up stone to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the uh, from the temple guard. Uh, maybe some one of our lessons will bring us here. Dearly beloved, Jesus Christ tried hard, worked hard, before he could guess, or he was able to convince some Jews that he was somebody. So they believed him, and they came to him. Jesus said, it wasn't novel, you need to be taught. So dearly beloved, thank God those of you who have found yourself in the true church. If you have been able to follow the practices that qualify the true church and you are one of them, we thank God. Right now, depart from me, I don't know where you come from, it's related to those in the satanic, demonic churches. If you find yourself in any of those churches, you have to blame yourself. You don't have to qualify to come and say, I did it, I did that. Go, go out from me. I don't know where you come from. You belong to another demon, not me, Christ. So go out from there. We have used this point number four to help them. To help believers to know we have different kind of churches which are headed by different kind of demons. Now those of you who have found yourself in true church, churches which Christ is the head and Holy Spirit is the one leading the church. Those of you who also hear the word, depart from me, you evil doers. Depart from me, you evil doers. So you might have found yourself in the good church, but you might not know what you are doing is wrong or right, or it's against the word of God. The rest of that program, you are the one I'm going to guide you by the grace of God. So those of you who have been added to our group in the uh, YouTube who has voluntarily subscribed, you have come to the right place. Uh, that they have a lot of people, but when you post the message, you see not everyone is watching. Why? Some people like one of the messages, they subscribe. When the message was going, is it not going in his church line? but rather the message was going against his church belief, so that person will no longer be sub, uh, listen again. We have a very big group where we do the Akan, the key one, our Ghanaian language. That is my native language. So when I'm speaking in my native language, I can speak whatever that I think is right. Here you see the way we are struggling, not me alone. Everyone, has, with the exception of those who are highly educated, if you are not highly, uh, it's not, not your language. Since it's not your language, you will slip. And some people who are so much concerned about the language will begin to laugh at you. They don't have knowledge. They don't have any knowledge about God. All that they know is language. English is somebody's language. So it's not it. You can't go and tell China or German that you can't speak English, so you are not good. The language is the language. But the subject, the detail, the knowledge is what is important. Okay? So the people here, Jesus made it clear that I'm going to teach you. The rejected ministry of pastors reveal. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth 
have been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of it. Belo Dearly beloved, here Jesus Christ was given the task. The job he was giving to the people is that he had already died. That death had paved way for everyone on this earth or in this world have the right to come to him. But they do not know. Somebody need to go to them, reach out to them. When you go and you try to explain the initial stage, the evangelism to them, and when they accept it, you bring them inside, then you baptize them. Or you do the baptism, then you bring them inside the church. The remaining activity is to teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. He commanded them a lot of things. And according to John chapter 16, 12 to 15, he said he couldn't even finish. What he commanded, that is not all. Holy Spirit was coming to continue. So whatever Holy Spirit will give, teach. So dearly beloved, Christ Jesus commanded his disciples to do this work. And that the disciples are no more around. Anybody that is saying, I have been called by God, your task is to teach. Anybody that claim God has called him. I said, there are so many subjects we are going to cover. This subject will help you to identify those that are truly called by God. We have already talked about the churches. Now we will see who is doing the work of God. The prophet I was talking to him was telling me, frequently, regularly, then I do the research, and I did the research, he pulled up some of the research, he sent it to me, I told him, brother, prophet as you are. Beloved, who is the prophet? Uh, Christian, we, have really, we, have, we really have trouble. Who is the prophet? According to God's kingdom, Christianity, God's religion, who is the prophet? Prophet is the person who hear, get the message direct from God and deliver to the people of God. That is a prophet. Now we have prophet who do research and say that God has given me, so this is, this is the word of God. <laughs> Apostle Paul said, the word I speak to you is not from human origin. I receive it direct from the one who called me. Let me check that one for you. Galatians chapter 1. So who is the prophet? We will be talking about it very soon. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preach is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. That is prophet. Prophets don't do research. Research is an insult to the Holy Spirit. Demonic churches ministers do research. What is research? They are looking for something. They will rather search what is it. And according to Ecclesiastes, I will take this subject for you in those in English. I had it in key, our language. And this subject will help you. Anybody who have character and do research has not been called by God. No. We don't do research. We receive the word. What education? We know my educational level. If you know my educational level, you will come from you. If I want to do research, where would I start? And that means I don't do research. So where, how do I get all these messages? from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus Christ. Prophet receive the message and deliver the message. Prophet don't do research. 
So you know the prophet of God and the prophet of the devil, the prophet of Baal. Baal had prophet, God had prophet. Baal prophet used I see, I see, I see, and also research, research, research. So not what they were, but research. When I received the message, and I don't understand, even when I understand, but I know the argument outside, I ask questions. And the quotations will be given. I have a lot of quotations for every point. It's not research. Okay? It's not research. But teach. Everyone that has been called by God, teach. Let's take our scripture. Let me use King James for you. This is King James. Jeremiah chapter 3. Prophet Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Listen attentively. And I will, let me read from verse 14 and 15. Jeremiah 3, 14 and 15. Turn, oh, oh, backsliding children, say the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one, I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. We are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. This subject it will go in line with some churches and some pastors. They will know that I'm telling the truth. This subject, some pastors will go out from my from my channel. Why? They believe in research. They believe in I see. The Lord said. The Lord revealed to me. I also believe that Bible. It might go in line with the word of God. Other than that, I can also say in the, in the, in the night, the Lord told me this. The Lord told me this. The Lord told me this. So the Lord told, the Lord told me might go in line with the word of God. Okay? It is because you who want to worship God, you don't have knowledge about the word of God. That is why they are telling you all this. You can also dream and come and tell them the Lord told me this. And Bible says, Satan make the masquerade as an angel of light to reveal himself to you that I am God, Holy Spirit. I want to do this, this, this. Okay, oh. then what is the scripture support? Okay. So, if you so like the messages I'm giving, a lot of advice, pieces of advice I'm giving you in this point is that depend on the teachers, not the four teachers, but God appointed teachers who teach sound doctrine, sound doctrine. Not though that have been coached to come and deceive, but depend on those that have been coached to deliver undiluted, undistorted, unadulterated word of God, the truth, okay? I'm talking about the, the last one around me. So, you go to Zion, verse 50, and I will give you passes according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. This is the prophecy that God was talking to his people, was prophesying how he was going to handle the New Testament way of worship. The prophet, prophet, prophetic, prophetic, prophetic was Old Testament. And having said it doesn't mean I'm not saying there is no more prophet. But the work, the function of the prophet in the Old Testament is changed. You remember last message? Since the priesthood changed, the law also changed. Remember the change, okay? In Christianity, there are some changes. So in the New Testament, the prophet of God received the word and delivered. They don't do research. It's not only I see, I see. We have the, the, the written word of God. That is completely. That is uh, reliable. So whatever you say you see must be in line with this word. Whether in line with King, King James or NIV, most of you, you don't like NIV, no problem. 
I also have King James. I have Vampire. I have other Bible. But uh, Bible has surrounded me. So when I get you or you ask me a question, I'm reading from NIV. You say, I don't want. I pick the Bible of your church and I'll read for you. For you to know that it's the same thing. That because of the English language, that's why I'm using NIV. So this one says, I, God himself, is the one who gives passes to. Dearly beloved, if you are following somebody who just uh, completed school and upgraded or continued to Bible school, what I'm saying is that if you are following somebody that, the reason why that man is called pastor is that he attended Bible school. <laughs> and that's why he's a pastor. You are a loser. You can't go to heaven. No. Bible school, it is not angel who teach there. It is not God angels that is teaching in the Bible schools. It is people that have been sent by the devil. So the people got demonized from Bible school. They demonize from Bible school. The teachers over there influence them. There might be some people teaching over there who don't even believe Christ. Or they have suffered apostasy. But now, it is the work. According to this passage I read for, for, for you from King James, the trusted Bible that almost every believer trusts. He said, God said, I will give you pastors. What are they coming to do? They are coming to feed the people that desire to worship God with knowledge and understanding. That is the work of the pastor, okay? So if you are asking me, now everybody is saying, so you don't know which is which, you are the one causing yourself, okay? Let me take you to John chapter 3, verse 34. Are you listening to me? I'm introducing the men of God. This is, this is the introduction of this point. John 3, 34. Who, for the one whom God has sent, speak the words of God. For God give the spirit without limit. Anyone that has been sent by God, it is the word that he teach. The word. Okay. Let me take you in the Old Testament. It was there. The, the, that is the very reason God has been providing teachers for his people in, old, in both Old Testament and the New Testament. Christianity, the religion of Christianity is the religion of discipleship. Teachings, teachings. Let's go to Ezra. The book of Ezra. From Ezra, you go to Nehemiah and then Esther. Ezra chapter 7. I will quickly read from verse 1 to, uh, to 10. Wait, 1 to 10. After these things, doing the ring of uh, attacks, this king of Persia, Ezra, son of Saria, the son of Azariah, the son of Hekiah, the son of Shalom. Let me forget about this place. All oh, the son, the son. Then let's go to verse 6. This Ezra came up from Babylon. He was a teacher. Where versed in the law of Moses. He was what? A teacher. Like I told you, somebody was confused that oh, man, this one said God has called me. This one said God has called me. This one said God has called me. So which is which? It brings confusion. I said, no problem. I know your problem. And you are thank you are you are fortunate. This is the subject I've reached. I'm continuing from today. So I'm revealing the ministers of God to you, okay? The men of God. As for preaching, everybody preach. But this Ezra was a teacher, and wherever that means he had been trained, or he knew the scriptures properly. He knew the scriptures properly. The king had granted him everything he asked for. The hands of the Lord, his God was on him. Some of the Israelites, including priests, Levites, Musician, gatekeepers, and temple servant also came up 
to Jerusalem in the seventh year of king of the king. So there were some others who went who also traveled with him. We have the priests and others. Let's continue the Levite. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the fifth month of the seventh year of the king. He had begun his journey from Babylon on the first day of the first month, and he arrived in Jerusalem for the first day of the fifth month. For the gracious hand of, of his God was on him. For Ezra had devoted himself to the duty, oh sorry, for Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, and to teaching it decrees and laws in Israel. It is the gracious hand of God that was on Ezra that provided the knowledge for him to teach. So if you are a minister, you claim you have been called by God. All that you got your knowledge is the research. Uh, I'm sorry to say you are not on the line. Uh, if you have not gone for demonic sources, I want you to help yourself. It is not the Holy Spirit using you. Trust me, frankly speaking, it is not the Holy Spirit. From the Old Testament, the gracious hand was on Ezra. And for that, and for that matter, he was able to teach. He knew the scriptures. Because of the gracious hand of God, at that time there was no Holy Spirit. So it, it, there were some benefit of the spirit and that was, that helped Ezra to become a good teacher and taught the people of God about the word of God. Let's go to the New Testament, the qualifications of ministers and overseers. 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. I'm, read, I'm, getting, I'm looking for uh, one point, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm here. Here is the trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desire a noble tax. Your King James will say a bishop by the same way. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, faithful to his wife, not his husband, not her husband. That means he's a man, right? Okay. Temperate, self-controlled, respectful, respectable, hospitality, able to teach, able to pray, no, able to prophesy, no, able to dance, no, able to sing, no, well, able to what? Able to teach. <laughs> able to what? Able to teach, okay? Okay, let's go to Second Timothy, chapter 2. Are you identify the man of God from the others? Let's continue. I do research. I do research. I have done research. Hey! Prophet don't do research. Prophet receive and teach. Second Timothy 2.24 And the Lord's servant, the Lord what? The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful, able to teach. Uh, dearly beloved in the Lord, I pray that those of you who have left with me and those that will join, may the Lord help you to properly understand this point. You guys are confused that there are a lot of ministers, everyone, every one of them is claiming he has been called by God. I want you I want to help you, or by the grace of God, I have been given the task to help you to stay away, keep all others, and then focus on the teachers. And the teachers, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. And with your wisdom, your brain, like I told you last video, you use your brain. When this one is saying black, and when this one is also saying red, that time you use your brain. If you are able, the brain that you'll be able to study and study and become a doctor, doing operation and other things, you can use that same brain to know, brain to know 
This one say red, this one say black. You use your brain to find out who is telling the truth. You leave what you want aside. Your position must be left behind. If you want to maintain your position, you will be deceived. Because you go to the one that is saying what you want. The witness can Paul told you. The friends you keep, the company you find yourself in, the church you attend, you attend, the pastor you submit to, the messages you listen, and what you want. So all those teachers, who is teaching the truth and who is teaching the lie? Who is being used by, used by Antichrist and who is being used by the Holy Spirit? You use your brain, your wisdom. You'll be able to know who. According to the point and the scriptures, with your little knowledge, you'll be able to know. All that you need to do, keep your options open. Don't close it that I'm already here. So that is all. Whatever is here is what. No, keep your option open. Keep your option open. That is a good thing, uh, advice I can give you. Those of you who are Ghanaian, maybe data problem or the language problem, if you want our local language with proper details and the proper ways of understanding, you can contact me. I'll add you to the group. We have a very large group. A lot of people are there from different churches. But they are causing themselves up, some of them. When we were taking the subject, it pushed some people out. They were no more listening again, even though because of hypocrisy, they are there. Some people left, stopped listening. Now other subjects had brought them. So they look at the title. If the title will go against the church, they will not listen. If the church will favor the church, he will listen. Christians are causing themselves, will not, say, not any demon, but we ourselves. So now, we have let you know, the person that God has sent, speak the words. God is himself is the one who gives pastors. Not me that I, oh, I, if I, I want to be a pastor, so let me go to. Here in America or Western world, uh, be a pastor is a professional. Profession. If you want to be an engineer, you go to engineering school. If you want to be a pastor, you go to pastoral school or Bible school. So that is what they do. But in Christianity, being a pastor is not a profession. It's a calling. Calling from God. The one that has been called by God. The one that has been called by God. Speak the words of God. God said, I will give you pastor. So Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, everyone that desires to do the work of God must be able. Able, that, that, that able means you have your enablement. You understand? The Spirit is enabling you, giving you the ability, the understanding, the correct, getting the word accurate. That is why he's talking able to, able to. He was using able to. Able to mean doesn't mean you have learned from somewhere. If that person got it wrong, you have got it wrong already. But when you get the source from the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, you'll be providing the correct one. But not that I see and I saw, no. I see and saw must be in line with the word, okay? God bless you. Jesus Christ himself began the teachings in the New Testament and promised the Holy Spirit will continue with them. And that is why we still have teachers in the five-fold uh, ministry or ministers. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 14. This passage. That efficient somebody can use to deceive you. And the Bible said, God has called somebody to become an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. So not everybody is a teacher. They can use it to deceive you. I will come there one day. I will tackle that subject. Who is an apostle? Who is a prophet? Who is an evangelist? Who is a pastor? The duty of a pastor. And who is that teacher? Who is that teacher? That teacher is last. But when you come from the rank, that teacher is dead. That teacher must be able to be seen in all of them. You are not a, you, you can't say I'm a pastor, I'm not a teacher. 
How can, how can you become a pastor? Who made you a pastor? When Christ makes you a pastor, he gives you ability to teach. Are you a prophet? You receive the message and teach. Hey, let me tell you, it's not your maba maba. I the Lord said, I the Lord said, I the prophet too. We are people who prophesy. Not that that doesn't mean they are prophets. You understand me? If somebody prophesies, that person is not a prophet too. We have prophet and we have prophecy and we have people that prophesy. The prophet are the people that have the direct, direct link with the Holy Spirit. He provides the message and he delivers. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 40, Apostle Paul was talking about prophesy, 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 and then uh, tongues and prophesy. If, you, if truly you receive the message from God and you deliver the message to the people of God, that is prophecy. The message that is directly from God to the people of God is what we call prophecy. <laughs> so some people, when they, they, are, they got fake power gift, they say I'm prophet. Prophet is not those who are functioning as a, a power gift to. Power gift mainly is given to the evangelist. Power gift is for the evangelist. Why? They are going out to bring people. So they, they need to have the power to perform signs to prove to the people out there that they have God. So believe what they are telling you. So that's why God gives enablement to the evangelist to perform miracles. But now, when some people got those fake things performed, they say, I'm prophet. Why? Because I pray for people to be healed. We all pray for people to be healed, but we don't take the title prophet. The reason is that being a prophet is not that I'm healing people. I have a prayer camp, so I'm a prophet. No. The teaching. Prophet teach. In the New Testament, the function, the work of a prophet is you teach. The word God, the God gives you the message and you teach the people. The prophecy, like I said, you cover all of them. We have declarative prophecy. You speak direct in your teachings. The prophecy come. As you be teaching, you pronounce something. You declare something. Direct from the Holy Spirit, you declare so you have different kind of prophecy, not one oh. Not one. We have different kind of prophecy. But those of you who do not have the knowledge about God always depend on Maba Maba. Uh, God said, God said, I'll say the Lord, I'll say the Lord. That is what you know. As I'm speaking now, I can declare something. If Holy Spirit wants me to declare. Sometimes when you are menacing, you see that you are very angry. And you be not not in that human. Getting angry with that person, you are making a mistake. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will take over, and now it will no longer be me. The words will come very harsh. Don't fight me. Don't get angry with me. It is not me. But the Spirit living in me is the one doing that. So Jesus Christ, according to Luke chapter 12, 13. Let me quickly read that one. I think we are making introduction. Luke chapter 13, 22. Then Jesus went through the town and villages, teachings as he made his way. So, so at least you have got this one. Jesus Christ was walking around teaching. He was teaching the people. You understand? So I will not allow those people to use Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 14 to deceive you. Or that's 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. That a God has called somebody to become a prophet, a apostle, evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher. So we have teachers. Me, I'm a prophet. I'm not a teacher. No, you are deceiving them. You know they don't know. That's why you are doing that. A prophet, you should be able to teach. And start from the overseer. The lowest one. You start. Before you enter the ministry, you should be able to teach. The ability to teach must be given to you. The ability to teach systematically, point by point, with the scripture support must be given to you. That is first attempt. 
If you can't do that, you are not a minister. So after that, then you find, you identify where you belong to. And then you focus on that. Power gift. I hear, I hear, it's for evangelists, not for a prophet. In the New Testament, they have been given. We, when we were in Ghana, we used to hear Bonky and the rest. Are they prophet? Are they prophet? They will come, when they come, we are in the big stadium. They will be on the center of the stadium ministry, some people will get their healing. Are they prophet? They are not prophet. They are evangelists. Healing, power gift is given to the, uh, the evangelist, not the prophet. Prophet, you deliver the message. Okay? I mean, oh, prophet do what? So those of you who do not have ignorance of God, I'm giving you one message today. Prophet deliver the message of God. The healers are the evangelists. Okay? Uh -huh. Since the people of God have no or very interest, literal interest, in the teachings, the Apostle Paul also, who also blessed with the teaching gift in addition to other gifts, ask for prayer support in order God may open the door for his message of teachings. Dearly beloved, the problem we have in Christianity is that the people that are worshipping God don't have time for the teaching. If you speak like some people have been pleading, they don't like long ones, short, short. Why? They don't have ability, the interest in the teaching. If it is music, oh, one hour, ten hours, no problem, music, they will be enjoying the music. If it is movie, three hours, two hours, they will sit down and watch all the movies. If it is a church program, three hours, they will sit down and watch all. But if you are doing teachings and it's more than one hour, it becomes a problem. Why? The human that we have come on this earth, we do not have interest in the teaching. So Apostle Paul was asking for prayer support. That support me so that I pray for me that I can speak the word as clearly as I should. When Jesus Christ came and he was teaching, people used to run away from him. People used to desert him. They don't want to go to him again. And when he do miracle, people come in their numbers. Why? That's what they want. From next week, I will let you know why Jesus Christ did not change his ministry to prayer, prayer, and then the miracle, miracle. But he depended on, he decided, he intentionally decided to keep the teaching and that alone. The teaching is the only one among the three types of word ministration that lead people to the kingdom of God. You continue from that one from next week. Since people of God are not ready for the long messages, I would like to end it here. This is one of the reasons why someone wanted to know if Jesus Christ came to look for very few people. You have, you have two ministries. One is teachings and one is miracle. When you are teaching the people, they will run away from you. They will desert you and go. But the moment you will be doing miracle, ah, they will go and call others. Come and see. Come and see. So if you want more people, you do what? Pull people. You understand? If you want more people, you, you will keep the one that bring more people. But Jesus Christ was, keep, was kept to the one that is sending people away, driving people away from them. So that's what that guy asked him. I only a few people that you want to save. So make every effort. If you want to, you have to try your possible best to make sure you are getting the necessary information in Christianity. After you have been saved, you have a long way to go. Salvation is like something that has been giving you opportunity that it, it can be possible for you to go to heaven. And salvation is uh, alone, without the work. Where people are confusing you is that you don't work to get salvation. But after you have been saved, you work your way by the help of the Holy Spirit through this salvation, then you make it to heaven. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord open your understanding. May he grant you 
the ability, the interest in the teaching so that you'll be able to work out of your own salvation. Don't confuse about the ministers in their numbers. And all of them are claiming, God has called me, God has called me, God. If God has called them, you will see from the scriptures, the work. Jeremiah 3.15, what is their work? John 3.34, what is their work? And then Second Timothy and First Timothy, all oh, let you know that. Everyone that claim they have been called by God must be able to teach, not able to preach you. Don't be confused with the preaching and the teaching. If somebody is preaching, it's not what we are talking about. Anyone, whether you are evangelist, whether you are a prophet, whether you are whatever you are, you must be able to teach. As long as you have been called by God, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Paul Enki. If you, as I said, if you are a Ghanaian, you want the local one, it's in Odu. We have a group, we are posting it for them. Send me your name and I'll add you to that group and you get the local, our own language. So we can speak with them, not the way we are struggling here. My number is 832-805-2912. 832-805-2912. You add American code and you WhatsApp me and I will get it. God bless you. If you have questions also, you will let me know. And I will be able to help you by the grace of God. Amen.